to Matchroom Fight Camp Week Are we one. live? Yeah, we, we can shut the door if you shut want. Shut the door, we're live, yeah? Yeah, yeah, live. We're live, live baby. <laughs> Delighted to say Eddie Hearn joins us. He wants the door shut, just to, to clarify that. Yeah. Eddie, I'm going to socially distance from you, but you've been in the bubble, so we've all been tested. Uh, how excited are you that it's all held together um, and you're ready to get going? Yeah, I think um, obviously so many obstacles to overcome during this whole period, and the final one, I guess, is the testing to make sure that everyone gets through. That was uh, done successfully, all the fighters are negative, and we're ready to go. Saturday night, whatever you want to call it. Matrim Square Garden, weekend at Hernies. Fight camp gets underway live on Sky Sports. We can't wait. You can feel how excited the fighters are, not just to return to live boxing, but to return in this kind of environment. And that's what I wanted to create. I wanted that buzz, you know, I didn't want to just stick them in some dark, dingy studio with no soul. I wanted them to walk into fight camp on Saturday and feel, feel the nerves, feel the adrenaline. And that's when you get the best out of an athlete. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we give them that kind of platform. Because this is a dangerous sport. Careers are on the line here on Saturday night. So it's over to them. We've almost done what we can. It looks spectacular up at HQ. You're going to see it on Saturday night. You won't believe what you're seeing. And now it's over to the fighters. Take this opportunity to, to change your life. Yeah, we've got a couple of minutes before we start. Just run us through the card. Um, which fight are you most looking forward to? Which one are you sort of most proud of putting on, I suppose? I can see well, the moniker behind you, no easy fights. But, yeah, it's exactly. And even for the younger fighters, you know, that, that is the moniker. And I think when you look at fights like Jordan Gill and Reese Bellotti that will kick off the night, historically, that, those guys are, are looking for a six-round little warm-up. Who wants to see that? You know, yeah, it's great for the fighter because they can get paid and they can get a tick over. I'm the one who gets stick because he's fighting someone you've never even heard of. So when I gave the call to Bellotti and Gill, look, fight each other. They both said yes, that was a great start. Dalton Smith steps up against Nathan Bennett, 9-1. You know, let's be honest, Dalton Smith's been hand-fed opponents coming in, foreign opponents who we didn't know whether could fight or not. Their record looked good. He's had easy nights. Now it gets real for Dalton Smith, but let's find out how good he is. Heavyweight action straight away on week one. Simon Valili against Fabio Wardley, English heavyweight title. Can't wait for it. Fabio Wardley, everyone's saying, could be up there with Joyce and Dubois. He's Dillian White, managed protégé. Simon Valilli just come in with a terrible moustache and said, I'm going to knock him spark he out. Really I know he is. And by the way, look at his pedigree. You know, GB, uh, podium squad, a Commonwealth Games medalist. He can really fight. Yeah, and at I Cruiserweight, well. yeah, and at Cruiserweight, I think he was struggling around that weight. He fancies this. I think um, Valilli is a real dark horse in that fight. The British lightweight championship, so much history with that belt. Such a great fight. James Tennyson, who may be one of the biggest pound-for-pound -pound punchers in boxing right now, against Gavin Gwynn, who I saw this morning, looked absolutely fired up, ready to go. Gave Joe Caldina a really good 12 rounds. And then the big one, Sam Eggington against Ted Cheeseman, which we all know. You know, we've got two guys there, 26 and 24. Yet, with the fights and the wars they've given us in the past, you feel like they should be in their early 30s. But what an opportunity for both to come and headline the first card on Fight, card, on fight Camp. Starts live at 7pm, five fights, all great tough fights. I'm really excited about week one. Whatever you do on Saturday night, light up the barbecue and do not miss it. Are you all right to stay with us or have you got to get ready? Probably got to get ready, but I mean, I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm available for everyone. No, Weddings, well, bar mitzvahs, anything, <laughs> don't really matter. Not many could afford yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Just talk us through the transformation that's gone up at the office, because we've only seen it, because we've been in the bubble, we've only mm. seen it from social media. The canopy, the changing rooms, uh, some pyrotechnics. I think I don't think I want to give too much away, but there's a lot going on up there. Yeah, there is, and you know, I've got to give massive credit to the team because I come up with these crazy ideas and say, right, this is what we're doing. Good luck. And you know what they've done is sensational. I mean, the money they've spent is frightening. But we wanted to make a statement, and we wanted to say that boxing is a major sport, and we are a major business. And that's what I feel like we've done. This is going to be broadcast all around the world. Um, and people are going to be tuned in saying, wow, and that's what we've got to do. We're not competing against other promoters anymore. We're competing against other sports. And we're all fighting for those eyeballs and that attention. So, you know, I feel like the, the job is amazing. The, the changing rooms, the ring walk, the house all lit up, the big canopy, the branding, everything. It's all there for the fighters. It's over to those guys now to go and do the business. It is weird, though, because we've been starved of boxing and live sport, and it comes at a pretty good weekend where there's not a lot else on, so mm. there should be fresh eyes on it. So at the same time, pressure's on to, to make it look good, but also for it to work. Oh, we have to drive numbers. You know, We've seen, at the moment, boxing come back with, with poor audience numbers. Personally, I feel like that's because no one's been pushing it or promoting it. We've given this a big push. You know, Sky Sports Action, Sky Sports Main Event, Sky Sports Mix. It's going to be a big audience on Saturday night, great opportunity for these fighters as well. But that's why we have to come back with a bang. We've worked so hard over the last 10 years to build so much momentum in the sport. We can't just 
turn it off now and say, all right, we'll come back when the time is right. So the weekend was deliberate. You know, we know the Premier League's finished. Now we shift to the boxing. You've got four great weeks of boxing culminating in a massive fight night between Dillian White, Alexander Povetkin, Katie Taylor and Delphine for soon rematch. OK, I will let you go now because Cheers. I know you want to hit the okay. top of this press okay. conference. Stay with us, everyone. We haven't got too long to wait, so I'll just run you through what's going to happen here because it's not the traditional um, press conference set up. So the board have limited the amount of fights that can be on a card. I think we all know that. Um, rather than doing one big press conference with Eddie leading it, which is what we usually do, um, the fights have to come in individually. You can see them coming in now. Uh, Jordan Gill and Reese Bellotti will kick everything off. Uh, they will do their press conference and then they will have a socially distanced head-to-head, -head, which we'll see how that works. After that, there will be a little break. We'll talk to each fighter, but the stage and the uh, chairs all have to be wiped down for COVID-19 reasons. And then we'll pick up and we'll start again. So apologies in advance if it's a little bit clunky, but you have to understand we haven't ever done anything like this before. Um, so fingers crossed it all works well. You can see. Reese and Jordan um, on stage with Eddie Hearn there. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie's still advertising for uh, after dinner work and some summer work in between shows. It's been very quiet. <laughs> right, I'll throw over to Eddie Hearn now to pick up with the first press conference. Afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Chris and Darren. A bit nervous, actually. It's been four or five months since I've done an actual live press conference. I'm used to doing them on Zoom, but we are back. Fight Camp begins this Saturday, live on Sky Sports, live on DAZN across America as well. We've heard all the, the puns. It's Matrim Square Garden, it's Weekend at Hernies, whatever you want to call it. But the truth is, what an opportunity for these fighters. What an opportunity for our sport. I've seen other people come back studios, empty casinos, great, and we credit them. We are different. We wanted to make a bang, we wanted to make an impact, we want to show you how great the sport of boxing is. This time you're gonna hear everything. You're gonna hear pin drops around the houses and the grounds of Matram HQ. You're gonna hear the punches land to the rib cage. You're gonna hear the fighters wincing in agony. You're gonna hear the fighters talking to each other, the referee's instructions, and you're gonna hear the dialogue between the corner team when it gets really, really tough. But the world has changed in the last few months and it may have changed forever. And maybe it's changed our sport forever. But we are back and what an opportunity for these guys. Maybe this is how it's going to be for the next couple of weeks. Maybe this is going to how, how it's going to be for the next couple of months. But what I do know is Fight Camp has changed the dynamics of boxing. The pandemic has changed the dynamics of boxing because now fighters are stepping up quicker. They're realizing they have to take their opportunity. The younger fighters coming through are realizing they have to step up, particularly against British talents. Here we have two guys in Jordan Gill and Reese Bellotti, probably due to have six round fights to come back and get their careers back on track. We spoke to both individuals. We said, this is a chance for Fight Camp to explode. Do you want to be a part of it? They both grabbed the opportunity, 10 rounds in the featherweight division against two guys that, you know, quite honestly, I like a lot. You know, and we come up to a stage now in the sport of boxing where we're going to see this a lot, putting our fighters in together in fights that we believe will give value for money for fans and broadcasters. These guys were flying. Jordan Gill headlined at Peterborough, sold a huge amount of tickets, beat Dominguez, and then it all came crashing down against Tinoco. Reese Bellotti the same, selling so many tickets, ramming out your call, and then, of course, lost to Ryan Doyle. They've come back, but this Saturday... They've got the opportunity to completely transform their career, take the limelight, and move on to the major, major championship fights. So, guys, thank you for taking the fights. Thank you to Jimmy Mack and the team and Dave Colwell as well. Jordan, I'll start with you. That is some barnet. Unbelievable. I told you in the contract you've got to keep that hair. I have to admit, I think next, year, next week you might have to just get a little trim on it, but you're in tremendous shape. And what a, a privilege, I guess, an honour, an opportunity to kick off fight camp on Saturday night. Yeah, it's a huge opportunity for me, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. It's part of history. It's something we might never see again, so thanks for having me, and uh, I'm glad you like the Barnet, but it's going to have to go at some point, um, but we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure when, but it's going to go at some point, and uh, it's a fight that I'm looking forward to. Uh, when Dave rang and said, 
you know, you're going to be fighting behind closed doors. Uh, your show was the first one cancelled, so you got the first opportunity to come back. Um, the name that they said first was Reese Blotty, will you fight? And I said, yeah, no problem. It's going to be a good fight. And uh, a fight that I think everyone's going to be looking forward to. How's this experience been for you? I mean, I came into the bubble yesterday. It's quite mind-numbing, if I'm being honest. I mean, you live that regimental lifestyle anyway, so I guess it's not too much different. But you're not getting to see the venue. You can see all the pictures coming back from Instagram. It looks sensational. But how's this whole experience been for you, being inside this bubble, so to speak, and knowing that on Saturday when you arrive at the HQ, you're going to see it for the first time, and it's going to be some sight. Yeah, it looks good. Um, from what I've seen on online, it looks amazing. Uh, I think you've done a great job. And like you said, you've separated yourself from the rest, the Frank Warrens and, and the top ranks. So, you know, congratulations. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Well, we'll talk about the fight in a bit. Reese, over to you as well. I've never seen anyone. I mean, actually two guys who are physically 365 days of the year in incredible shape. You are one of them. I was looking at your six-pack on Instagram uh, this morning while you were playing Mario Kart with Jimmy. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, obviously... I can relate to that. But um, <laughs> the, the fight itself, Reese. obviously you come off a great fight in Italy. I think probably kicking yourself a little bit from that performance because you could have gone maybe a gear or so up and I think you believe you could have won that fight. But again, these are the opportunities you've got to take and a great start to fight camp, kicking it off as the first fight. Yeah, no, exactly that. Like you said, uh, didn't perform to my best in Italy. It kind of is what it is. You don't look too m much back on it and with excuses and things like that. It is what it is on the night. Um, and like you say, I got the offer for Jordan Gill. I thought it was a great fight for me uh, to propel myself back up to where I want to be. Obviously, when people are analysing this fight, and you've heard it you know, dozens of times before, it's Jordan Gill may be technically better, but Reese Bellotti carries that power. He's always dangerous in that fight. Is that as, as clear as this fight is? Or have you got to be a little bit cuter? Or are you looking to walk Jordan Gill down and try and stop him? Yeah, like listen, like you say, everyone's got their opinions on it, but like I say, I've carried a power. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that Jordan doesn't punch hard. You know what I mean? Just because his record doesn't show it doesn't mean he doesn't punch hard. He's it, like I say, on his performances, definitely looks technically better than me. But on the night, we could both turn up with different, different game plans. In terms of this fight, I think you know at championship level could be your last roll of the dice, if you like. I know you haven't been in the game that long, but you have had a number of championship fights. Do you feel the pressure? to make sure you win this fight and to leave absolutely everything at the ring at fight camp on Saturday? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like you say, I'm going to leave everything in there that, uh, on the night. And if if uh, Gil comes out the winner, I've put my best performance I can on that night. Jordan, obviously, again, that people analysing this fight, I think that's pretty straightforward, really, isn't it? We know about the car the power that Reese Bellotti carries. You said in, in uh, Matchroom uh, Boxing YouTube build-up that you believe he carries world-class power as well. Something you've got to be wary of in this fight as well, because a huge amount on the line for you. Yeah, 100%. Everything's on the line for us both. And I think that's what make, makes this fight so important, so interesting for everybody involved. So I've got to be on aware. I've got, to, like you said, like I said he's got world-class power, and I, I believe that he's got 12 knockouts out of 14 wins. And um, he'll be looking for them big shots, and I've got to make sure that I avoid them big shots. And uh, we'll see you on the night. Well, we cannot wait. The first fight of fight camp, 10 rounds in the featherweight division. Jordan Gill against Reese Bellotti. It's the perfect way to kick off fight camp. Two great fighters, two great guys with everything to prove on Saturday. Guys, we're going to have a quick head-to-head -head up here now before we pass over to Chris and Darren. Please take your mark. Jordan, Jordan Gill is going to join us live on the Facebook stream, just behind that microphone there. Jordan, uh, I mean, you've been spending the whole time around the hotel with him, so you've probably seen him face to face, but anything to read into that head-to-head? -head? I don't think so. You know, there's no beef there. Um, he's a cool guy, and uh, on Saturday night, we uh, take it in the ring, and um, there's going to be no no hard feelings after the fight, no, no love lost in the fight, and, um, you know, you can't read anything to it. There's no needle there, but it's quite nice that sometimes fighters shy away from the truth and want to sort of distance. Both of you have said your careers are on the line, certainly at the top level here. Yeah, definitely. I think it's only a fair assessment, and all you can say is is that the truth, and the truth is that both our careers are on the line, and we both desperately need this win. 
and um, I'm going to be putting everything on the line and, and putting everything in on Saturday night to make sure I come away with that win. There's that old cliche like pressure creates diamonds. There is a huge amount of pressure on both of you. What do you think about your character will, will show us that under pressure you can deliver? Well, I think if you look at my biggest nights, then um, I always shine. I always like shine like a diamond, like you say, under the pressure of when I headlined in Peterborough. It was one of my best performances when I was up against it, against Ryan Dorr in a fight that most people ripped me off for. In my first big title fight, you know, I shone. And that was a fight where he was coming off confidence after just stopping Reese Bullock, and I'd done him in seven rounds. What about your preparation for this? I don't know if you've seen the debate packages that were running on Sky. People saying you've been hurt in the gym and stuff like that. Do you want to clear up any of those rumours? Yeah, it's absolute nonsense. Um, I've been training hard in the gym. You can't read too much in sparring anyway, but you know, Dave will tell you. I've been in with Dave three years in the gym now, and he's not once seen me hurt. Up, like even standing on my feet, I, I've not been, I've not hit the floor, head or body, and I've not even been hurt. So you know it's complete nonsense, and uh, I don't know where these rumours come from, but they are what you say, they're rumours. But if you read into them, then more for you. Yeah, well, it's far in rumours. It wouldn't be professional boxing without them. Um, just one word on the future before we let you go. What does a win here do for you? Um, where would you want to go if you beat Reese Bellotti and beat Mustafa? If I beat Reese Bellotti and beat him in style, then I see myself separ separating myself from domestic level. And uh, it's a level that I think I am. I think I'm above domestic level, so I'd like to push on for European um, honours and, and look towards a world title shot in the next 12 to 18 months. Just finding in your prediction? A Gill win at all costs. Perfect. Look, I'll let you go because I know that we're uh, going to switch you over. I'm just going to fill until we get a word with Rhys Bellotti, who's just with our broadcast partners over at Matchroom. So I don't know if you could see in the background there, I'll just step in to show you. So whilst that was going on, I'm not sure if you could see that we had the COVID clean on stage. So the microphones were cleaned, uh, the chairs were all wiped down. And although we have all been tested and we're in this bubble, it is just important that we take all the precautions. So yeah, that was the first fight camp head to head. And uh, Eddie Hearn was talking it up, which was was nice. I think that one could be a potential show. See, like, well, Eddie, while you're there, you might as well join us. I mean, I just said to Jordan Gill there, you can downplay it um, and distance yourself from it, but he said no. Both of our careers are on the line at the top level. They are, and it's hard to tell them that because I really like them, and I've spent you know a lot of my time trying to build those guys to position. But quite frankly, this is it for both of them. You know, Jordan Gill looked sensational, didn't he? You know, he headlined at Peterborough, stopped Dominguez in a couple of rounds. And all of a sudden, it come crashing down against Tinoco. Now, we know that he was ill, but Tinoco can fight. You know, was it just that he couldn't stand up to the firepower of Tinoco, or he wasn't quite tough enough to withstand that? We don't really know, but we'll find out against really Reese Velocity because he can really punch. And I think Reese is in that sort of stage in his career, in that that territory where he's like, I've got nothing to lose, really. You know, he probably was on the verge of packing it in. He, he had a good job. You know, he gave that up to go full-time boxing. And he's probably thinking, you know, I won the Commonwealth title, I won titles, didn't quite get to European level, but so I'm rolling the dice here again. It's, it's, it, the fight's gonna do exactly what it says on the tin. Gil's gonna try and box and move and look pretty. And Reese Bellotti is gonna walk him down, work his body and try and break him up. I'm gonna let you go because uh, Reese Bellotti is shortly gonna make his way round to us. Reese Bellotti, sorry, you can't really see the setup here, but he, Reese Bellotti can't walk back through the press conference room. He has to exit the building and walk around it. So, to paint the picture, he's just about to emerge from a door around the right. Reese, just need you for two minutes, if that's possible, just on that microphone there. A lot of respect between the two of you. Um, we just, I'll ask the same question. Jordan said, look, there's no two ways about it. Our careers at the top level are on the line here. Do you share that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, this is a career defining fight for both of us. He also said you've got world-class punching power. I'm sure you'll argue you've got a bit more than that. With world-class punching power, you can only use it if you can land. Are you confident that at some point during that fight you're going to be able to land on him? Yeah, of course. We're in a 10-round fight. I'm going to land on him at some point. Um, but hopefully there'll be a bit more strings to the bow than just the power in this fight. Um, obviously, you'll see a bit more technical ability about me in this fight. And to get to Jordan Gill in the first place, I'm going to have to be technically better. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I'll let you go. You can see... Behind, thank you. You can see on stage that the next fighter is already Dalton Smith, who I have to tell a story. Cooked some salmon in his room last night. Asked us before he did it, do you think that this will smell if we do it? 
I confidently said to him, no, I don't think it will smell. The whole hotel smelled of fried salmon last night and this morning. Um, and obviously Nathan Bennett is on stage with him there. Eddie Hearn waiting patiently. Okay, let's make our way over to Eddie Hearn, who's with both fighters. Thanks, Chris. We go to the second fight of the night, Fight Camp Week 1. This is going to be coming at you around 8 p.m. as the sun starts to set in the hills of Essex and over the city of London and the HQ becomes lit up and we really start to see the beauty of Fight Camp unfold. But the beauty will turn to nightmares for one of these two and a great fight. And this is exactly what I was talking about, about Fight Camp, fighters stepping up before their time. Dalton Smith coming out of the GB amateur setup has looked sensational so far. He's been given some easy fights, some easy nights, not by his own asking, but it's just worked out that way. A lot of these guys come out of the GB system. They get off to a nice little easy start. All of a sudden, that changes on Saturday night against 9-1 and one Nathan Bennett, an opportunity for Nathan Bennett to completely turn his life around and what an opportunity for both guys to be part of week one. This fight, I'd love to take all the credit of it, but it was made, as we know, many of these fights made in the modern age via Twitter, where Nathan called out Dalton Smith. Dalton Smith said, yes, please. And I thought, this is perfect for what we want to try and do for fight camp. Dalton, I'll start with you, a.k.a. Gordon Ramsay, the resident chef here at the Holiday Inn with your little pan and pod, stinking the place out with your salmon. How's it been? Looking in great shape. I think you're excited because for the first time in your career, you know you've got a real test. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's my first test and it's one I'm very comfortable of. And, you know, coming here to fight camp, you know, you've got, we've got to thank you as well for putting the set up on the, the big occasion of, of what it is. But, you know, it's, it's, it's time to get to business now and we're here for one reason and that's to fight. And, you know, it's my first step up and one I'm very um, confident for. We know you're a consummate professional, you're always in shape, you train hard for every fight, but what's different about the mindset going into this fight, knowing that you've got a real British contender as well that you know about, you've seen before, you know how fit he is, you know what an opportunity this is for him. D can it be disappointing when you step up in, in other fights in the past and you know you feel like you're you know, up against an opponent that's overmatched? This, this must be fun for you knowing that you've got a real fight on your hands on Saturday. Yeah, and I think the main thing as well when I'm when I this is the first time I've done a full like ten week professional camp because last year it was stop start I was f I was very active last year so this is the first time I've I've had a full um, professional camp so and to and to have a durable opponent in um who I've got on Saturday night it's Nathan Nathan I've got mine bl blank then <laughs> sorry but um but yeah and it, it drives you when you train it makes you train harder because you know you've got to be one hundred percent and I know. Nathan's going to be coming, so, um, you know, I've, I've had to prepare 100%. Nathan, you got this opportunity via social media, if you like, but how do games change? You know, you're used to fighting on smaller shows, ticket seller up there in Liverpool. All of a sudden, in the old world of boxing, you wouldn't have been probably put into this fight by your manager. You might have wanted it, but the management says, no, no, he's OK on our shows, thank you very much. But what a chance, what an opportunity. Live on Sky Sports, the second fight of Fight Camp. This is, this is it for you. It doesn't get any bigger. Definitely, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity that I was looking for, to be honest with you. When this lockdown came about, I thought I was meant to be fighting for the Central Area on the 6th of June. I'd boxed, I think I boxed a week after Donnelly, boxed on the 7th, I boxed on the 14th. And then the lockdown came about a week or two later, and I thought, what am I going to do here now? So that, that I knew that fight wasn't happening, so I just thought, and I was getting onto you on Twitter about the Gardner fight, and you just blanked me. So, <laughs> <laughs> And then I thought, and then Steve Woods got back to me and said, um, Look, Eddie's not going to put two of your lads, two, two of Steve Woods' lads on the fight. You know, he's looking for fights of his own. And then I didn't hear nothing for a while. And then I was in the car, like I said, I mentioned it in my previous interviews. He phoned me and said, what do you think of Dalton Smith? And I just said, I'd never really heard of Dalton Smith or seen any much of him. But I said, if you can make the fight, make the fight. I mean, because I believe in myself against anybody at 140 pounds. I'll give anyone a fight at 140 pounds. Trust me on that one. And Saturday night, I'm going to prove that. Well, we've seen the pictures across social media. You're in incredible shape. And on the, the preview show with Tony Bellew the other day, he said anyone trained by Steve Harkin is going to be in great, great shape. Do you feel like the engine is ready to just go at it 200 <coughs> miles an hour from the first bell on Saturday night for eight rounds? Yeah, yeah of course. Look, I've, I can do eight rounds on my head easy. You know, it's, not, it's 
people people are going to think I'm just going to come in and steamroll and <coughs> we find out Saturday night what the fight's going to start like and after the first round we know where the fight's going. Do you feel like you need to take Dalton Smith to those places that he might, well he hasn't been before in his professional career? We know he's got bundles of talent, bundles of skill, but the question mark is can he be in there when things get really tough in the pro game? Is that what you've got to do on Saturday night to make it uncomfortable for Dalton Smith? Of course, yeah. It's, it's, it's a fight, isn't it? I've got to make it uncomfortable for him as much as I can. And Saturday night, that's what I'm aiming to do. Dalton, you ready on Saturday night to go to those places? You haven't had to do it so far as a professional. Your skill set is unquestionable, but what we always find out about young fighters is how much they want it, how, how, di how deep they can dig and how big their heart is. We, we should see a bit of that from you on Saturday night, and you might have to show it. Are you ready to show that against Nathan Bennett? And do you think you'll have to show that against Nathan Bennett, or do you expect yourself to just be too good? I'm not saying you know it's going to be a wipeout, but I believe these levels, and you know Nathan said before, we both haven't been in those situations as a, as a professional, and I know I'm going back to the amateurs, but I've been in some very tough WSBs um, in the amateurs, boxing, you know, the Olympic silver medalist in Toledo, Lopez did five rounds, you know, some of the tough ca Kazakhs. So um, I've, I've, I've had those tough fights, and I know it's a totally different game, but it's the same setup, and I just feel on Saturday night I'm just going to show my levels. Well, the stage is set, guys. I can't tell you. When you turn up on Saturday, you've never seen anything like this. Massive opportunity for both of you, Dalton, to progress to the levels that we expect you to, and to Nathan to just completely change your career. There's a big contract for you if you get the win, and Dalton's looking to get the win and move on to British titles as well. So we're going to have a head-to-head -head here in front of us before we pass to Chris and Darren. Guys, if you can take your seat, your steps at the mark, please. Nathan Bennett's going to join us live on the Sky Sports Boxing stream. Nathan, that's your microphone there. Um, anything to read into that head-to-head -head there? It's a f I mean, it is funny because you've been mixing with him the whole time in the hotel, so you haven't... Bad, it's, there's no bad blood there, you know what I mean? Saturday night, we're going to get an easy job. What does it mean to you when Eddie Hearn says, look, this is life-changing for you, there's big contracts of if you win this? this, this I, I know that. I know on Saturday night what I'm going to do and what I'm capable of doing. Eddie also said, look, we don't really know how good Gordon Smith is. Would you count that and say... Nobody really knows how, how good, good I am. Yeah, of course, yeah. They're saying it's a step up for him, but like, it's a step up for me as well. You know what I mean? But I know what I can do, what I've been doing in the gym. Hinted at it there. Is it, I don't want you to give away any sort of game plan. I'm sure you wouldn't, but ideally, if you can take this round, does that give you a better chance? The longer the fight goes, the more your chance increases? Of course, yeah. This, 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 as long as the fight goes, but it's a fight, isn't it? Anything can happen. So... Saturday night, we're going to find out what, what it's about, first round. You know, you, don't, you know from boxing, don't you? After the first round, you try and work each other out and see what's going on. But after that, it's, it's on, isn't it? Saturday night, can't wait. How are you dealing with all this, enjoying all this, the bright lights, a lot of cameras? It's a, I don't want to do down what you've been done before, but is this slightly different? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot different from what I've been used to, you know, but it's in, in the back of my head. Like I, sp I was speaking to um, someone yesterday, and I've always known in my head that I'd be here one day. So... I'm just taking it in my stride, really. Something we didn't pick up on yesterday, Eddie didn't mention it there, but it's a stroke of genius. When you knew that you were going to fight Dalton Smith, I'm told, tell us if we're right, that you had someone take all your fights down from VIP oh, Boxing TV. All, all all the the when the fight got made, um, I spoke to my manager, Steve Wood, and he said, I've, um, I've took all your fights down off him. Um, I didn't even know, you know, to be honest, I didn't even think of <laughs> anything like that to do. So we've got, we got to credit Steve Wood? Yeah, yeah, Steve Wood, give Steve Wood all the credit for that. He said, I've took all your fights down off him, um, the VIP thing, so. It is what it is, isn't it? And whereabouts are you in the hotel? He didn't smoke you out by cooking in his room either, No, did no, he? I'm on the um, second floor. I think he's on the first. We're on the second floor, so it's all right. And then, perfect, just before I let you go, have you got a message for everyone back home who will be watching this that you perhaps you haven't had a chance to catch up on? Yeah, yeah, tune in. Saturday night, going to be a box fight. Perfect, wish you all the best. Cheers, thanks, Hans, appreciate you. Okay, so stay with us just while we're waiting. Dalton Smith is just fulfilling one or two other... Um, media commitments and then he'll be making his way to join us. Let's just have a, a little look at this fight. Dalton Smith obviously comes with a tremendous reputation. Um, eight rounds at super lightweight. Dalton obviously trained by his father, Grant, who's been...
Brown, the hotel, he's a great character. But Nathan Bennett is the interesting um, side of this fight because we don't know too much about him. Eddie hinted there, he's done a lot of his learning on, on Steve Wood shows, um, non-TV, smaller crowds. Um, so he's coming up really from, from the outside and don't know if that means there's any less pressure on him. He spoke, he spoke to us yesterday in this, uh, in this very room and just said, look, forget about the pressure, all the pressure I'm putting on myself. Um, is from me. I want to perform and I want to do myself justice. We're still live, Eddie. Come and join us. Yes, sorry, Mark. You, you took my I wasn't sure if you're going to join us. Oh, um, I, did. I heard someone just told me I was getting paid by the second. <laughs> that was amazing. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Uh, we like this match because mm. Dort Smith has very, been very impressive so far, but Nathan Bennett comes with uh, a lot of confidence and. Um, Seems bang up for him. Good size as well. I mean, you know, you saw in the in the head-to-head -head match up there, but Andy, like, I can't tell you, this is the great thing about boxing, man. And I may use COVID-19 as an excuse for many years to say to fighters, sorry, you've got to fight this guy. Luckily, Dalton Smith was a guy who looked at Nathan Bennett and went, all right, it's probably a fight I should have in two or three <laughs> fights time, but I understand the situation. And I just said to him, at fight camp, you're not going to be taking a foreigner that we don't know about, you know, eight and six but actually the eight wins didn't really exist and you know you come over I get disappointed I sit at ringside and I think you've trained for eight weeks I've paid you all a load of money and this is pony right so and, and then I go on Twitter and then the abuse starts blowing so it's like what's the point yeah. with fights like this you know you're going to get value for money you're going to see how good Dalton Smith is and you might even see an upset as well so perfect well you say you're getting paid by the second so I don't want to keep you here uh, Dalton Smith if you just come in my advice to you would be strike a deal with him to get paid by the second. We won't get him off the screens. Um, that was that was quite nice words there uh, between the two of you. Nathan Bennett comes uh, full of confidence. Interesting, the first time I've heard you mention the WSB experience. How key do you think that will be? Yeah, it's going to play a, a, a major role. You know, I bit that, that everyone know who's, who follows the amateurs. They know the World Series of boxing. There's no gimme fights in that. You're fighting the best fighters around the world, and you know I've been doing that since I was 18. And you look on paper as a professional, I've not had none of those big tests yet, but you know, on Saturday night, I know that's going to play a big role in it. How much is that a motivating factor that this is your first real step up and there's going to be a lot of new eyes on this? Tremendous motivation to put in a career best performance so far. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm here to do. That's what I've been training for the last 10 weeks. You know, I'm in the, the best condition I've ever been in. That's just by um, having a real, real good 10 week camp and doing it pr professionally. And this is my first step up and that's what we're here for. The, you don't you don't learn anything by you know having a t ten fight record with gim with gimme fights. So you know Nathan Nathan is a good fighter, and you know I'm looking forward to, to a good fight. So now co-main event of the night at Fight Camp Week One, the British Lightweight Championship between James Tennyson and Gavin Gwynn. I love this fight. I love this fight so much because all the hype on James Tennyson up at lightweight could be one of the most dangerous pu punchers in the division. And then I think back to Gavin Gwynn's performance. His first performance really in the big time against Joe Caldina gave him a great fight over 12 rounds. We know that since he's moved to 135 pounds, James hasn't boxed at the level of Gavin Gwynn. Does he actually carry the power? We know how tough Gavin is. We know how good his chin is. And I can't wait to see this fight. Everything on the line for the British Lightweight Championship. James, I'll start with you. Probably a lot better for you making 135 to 130, but a big fight for you. And like I said, looked fantastic at lightweight so far, but on Saturday, your first real ch real test in the weight class. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, first, you could say, big, tough fight at lightweight. You know, Gavin Gwynn's a real tough lad, durable. Um, he gave a real good account of himself versus Joe Cardina. So, you know, I'm expecting a tough night. You know, the guy works hard. And, you know, seeing from his previous pr uh, interviews, you know, he's very confident in getting the win. So, you know, I'm excited about this one. The hype about your power, you know, I saw an Irish article calling you the Irish Golovkin. <laughs> Is it, have you got to be careful not to get carried away with that talk about your punch power and remember your boxing skills as well? I mean, do you just feel that you can walk down Gavin Gwynn and stop him or have you got to be smart in there as well? No, definitely, you know, I need to be smart about work, you know. If I go in and get ragged and, you know, try and use this part of the talk about, you know, it could backfire on me. You know, I need to be smart about my work and, you know, stick to the game, the game plan that me and my team have set out to make sure that I get the win. One thing I love about this fight is at 1.30, we did see you at times be a bit frail around the body. We know how tough it was for you to make weight. Again, going back to Tony Bell, you said sometimes when you move up, you become much tougher, much more durable. Do you feel you got that now? I mean, Gavin's going to test that on Saturday night. I suppose those questions are still a bit unanswered, but do you feel in yourself much tougher? Yeah, absolutely. It was literally 
doing drastic weight cuts, you know, it was it was killing me off, it was killing my performance, you know, I was weak to the body, you know, and it showed. And um, from from I've moved up, you know, I'm feeling a heck of a lot stronger. Um and you know, through through my sparring sessions and my training sessions I can feel it, so I just need to really show it on fight night. Gavin, welcome back. I, I love having you on the shows. I remember when you fought Joe Caldina. It was a great fight, and you, you hung in there after a tough opening spell. You pushed him all the way. And I remember the changing rooms after you can't, and you said, any other opportunities, just let me know. You know, a couple of black eyes, and you got it here. You know, the first fight week of fight camp, another massive opportunity for you to become British champion. Yeah, it's a, it's a life-changing opportunity for myself, so I'm going to take it with both hands, yeah. Obviously, you are known for your toughness as well. James has that that sort of image and that reputation as a big puncher as well. Y are you wary of that? Do you believe that hype as well? Or are you confident going into this fight? Yeah, definitely he's a massive puncher. It doesn't matter if he's down with super feather or, or lightweight, he's, he's, he's a massive puncher. Like, you, you see the people he's been in with and knocking over in two or three rounds. Like So that speaks for, for itself. So I'm going to be definitely wary and I'm going to... And go, go and stick to the game plan during the fight. Like I know that you and Chris would have and Tony would have watched the tape of James Tennis, and you see down a few times to the body, obviously against a world class performance in Tevin Farmer, but also against Martin Ward as well, who he went on to stop as well. Do you think those frailties are still there, and are you looking to exploit them at the weekend? Um, not so much because that was probably down to make a weight making, but obviously he's been stopped before, so I'm going to try and stop him again. And to become British champion, it's going to be an unbelievable environment up there. I've said, heard you as well say that you promised your boy you'd get the title. So you put the pressure on yourself. Yeah. You're ready for Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think we both have. We've, uh, we've both said we've taken the belt on for our boys. So may the best man win. Yeah. And finally, James, I know you've got aspirations to go back and challenge for that world championship at lightweight. What a division at the moment. You know, you moved to it. Maybe when you moved to 135 pounds, it wasn't as crazy as it is, but when you look at that world-level picture, you know, Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, Teofimo Lopez, Vasily Lomachenko, the list goes on and on. Huge opportunities to be in major fights in the division. Massive, massive opportunities, you know. The, the lightweight division is on fire at the minute, you know. I feel like a mix it with guys. You know, I want to be in amongst it, and I want to be one of the names up there, you know, putting on them big shows. Well, firstly, you have to get past a very tough fight against Gavin Gwynn, the British lightweight championship, the co-main event, Fight Camp Week 1, James Tennyson against Gavin Gwynn. Do not miss it, guys. If you can take your, your stance up here for a head-to-head, -head, please. Gavin, that's your microphone there. Uh, good to see you again. Um, I wonder if you take any offence when people say the first thing they say about you is you're incredibly tough. Uh, it, it, do you think to yourself, I've got a lot more in the arsenal than that? Yeah, definitely. Like, I boxed my country over, I think it was like 30 times around the world. Like, I, I'm, I definitely got more on the buckle than just being tough. Like, so. That being said, w when you know that someone's coming in and they are a, a legitimate puncher, uh, at some point, you, you're going to have to get wet when swimming. Um, what do you have to do to beat uh, James Tennyson? Um, just stop boxing, really. I know it's going to get tough in there. I know I'm going to get caught. Obviously, you're going to get wet. You, you go swimming, you're going to gonna get wet now. So it is what it is. But I know I got it deep down to dig in and uh, pull off the wind. Like, yeah. When we have seen him get put down in the past, um, it has been to the body. And I think the educated guess at that is that it was making weight. But... Um, up at lightweight, do you think that that could be an area that you could target perhaps to the body? Maybe, uh, could be a possibility, but obviously I'm not going to give my game plan away now. But I think that was all down to making weight. Uh, we know how hard it is making weight, and he's quite big at a lightweight anyway. So dropping him extra food, like five pound, just that must have been killing him to make the weight. So I think he's going to be a lot stronger as well up at lightweight. So it's going to be a lot harder for me to stop him to the body. In terms of physicality, though, how tall are you? Because you are uh, a very big lightweight as well. Yeah, I'm not far off, like six foot. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite rangy, but I don't like the box at range. But I'm, sure, I'm thinking I'm going to have to box at range this fight and uh, use my ability, yeah. And how is it making the weight in lockdown? I mean, it's, it can't be a walk in the park with this, but um, 
don't look uh, drawn or anything. I've seen you around the hotel relaxing with uh, Tony Borg and, and yeah, it's like because uh, we wanted to get our weight down before we come to down here because we didn't know what it was like with the gy using the gym and everything like that. So I, d I don't put a lot of weight on anyway. So about eight, eight weeks out, I was only probably about ten pound over. So that that was perfect. Like so. And just a shout out to your little boy. Um, what's yeah. his name? It's Arlo. Arlo Grin. Yeah. Arlo. In yeah. Your, it must have been heartbreaking not taking the belt back to him uh, against Cordino. What have you said to him before you left him this time? Yeah, like uh, he's phoning me all the time, FaceTime me and things like that. And I, he's just said, Daddy, I want a prize. So, yeah. No, oh, lovely. Well, big shout out to him. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Gavin. Thank I'll you. Let you get off. Uh, I'm not sure if Eddie Hearn's going to come and jump back in. Okay. Yeah. Just worried about the seconds that you're racking up. Uh, it's warm in it. <laughs> That's why I'm standing on mm. screen because I'm sweating. Um, I think. Two really nice guys. Mm. In terms of the trade fight, we'd really like this one. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be uh, toe to toe. I think, you know, you saw against the Cordina, uh, against Gordina, Gavin Gwynn was just didn't give up. You know, Cordina's movement was fantastic in that fight, and he was picking him off. I don't think Tennyson will be doing the same. I think he'll be in front of him. And I, you know, James says, you know, I won't be looking just to be reckless with my power. I think he will be. It's very difficult to not be when everyone tells you you're the so Irish Golovkin. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. but I think Gavin Gwynn is underrated technically as well, and I think he's got a great chance in this fight. You know, you look about Fabio Wardley, Simon Valili, a lot, lot of similarities here. We don't know if that frailty with James Tennyson was because of the weight. It definitely didn't help, but is he durable at 135? And I think we'll find out against Gavin Gwynn. James, just come in and substitute in for Eddie Hearn. Like for like punches. Um, that's just your one there, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to sort of reiterate what Eddie Hearn said there, how difficult is it not to get carried away with the punches tag when you are knocking everybody out? You, you could, you know, you could very easily get carried away with, you know, all the hype about the, the punch power and knocking these guys out. But, you know, when you're fitting a guy like Gavin Gwynn, who's real tough, durable, um, you need to be smart about your work, you know, you need to stick to your game plan. If you get carried away, you know, you could easily go the opposite way. So, you know, I'm very focused on what I need to do. One thing that we took from yesterday, the media day in here, you uh, put your fight kit on and, and obviously showed your torso. Incredible shape. Every boxer that we ever interview says, yeah, I'm in the best shape of my career. Would you argue that this is the best shape of your career? Absolutely, no doubt. You know, I've, I've had a real tough camp. Um, it's actually, you could say my camp more or less was going through the whole lockdown too. Um, so no doubt my man, you know, I'm in the shape of my life and I'm more than ready. You probably didn't see the press conference before your one with Fabio Wardley and Simon Valili, which mm. sparked and a lot of bad blood in that one. Whilst there isn't the bad blood in this one, there is sort of um, a desire to, to win at all costs. Desire to win at all costs. You know, I've I've no disrespect for any of my opponents. I don't see no grub matches. You know, I just work hard, go in, put a shift in, get the win. You know, you leave the ring as friends, from my opinion. Brilliant. Well, thank you for joining us. You can see the next press conference is ready to go on stage. Eddie Hearn with the main event, Sam Eggington and Ted Cheeseman. Yes, the final fight of the night, Matrim Fight Camp. As I said, this one is going to be in full darkness with the house lit up, London in the background, probably a few fireworks going off, which we've got up our sleeve as well, and a bit of Sweet Caroline before the ring walks for the main event, a fight that everybody's talking about, debating backwards and forwards. Sam Eggington against Ted Cheeseman for the IBF International Super Welterweight Championship. It is a great fight. When you think Sam... 26, I believe, Sam, have I got that right? 24, Ted as well. Unbelievable, the fights that these guys have been in their career so far, and to think that they're in this kind of fight at such a young age. We expect this one to be an absolute cracker. Top 10 in the world, rankings on the line as well. Sam, we'll start with you. Great night in Italy, um, you know, at the end of last year, completely transformed your career. I guess you're protecting that world ranking now. You know, Ted's looking to try and take that from you, but you look in great shape, ready to go, kicking off the first main event of week one at Fight Camp. Yeah, like you say, um, Italy was a, a, a great, you know, adventure, I suppose. You know, we went over there, you know, with a chip on the shoulder and thought, you know, we had to get this one done and get it done right. 
you know, to get us back where we needed to be. Um, we've done that. We've come back, and you know, this is this is what's next. So, yeah, I'm 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 excited. Um, as soon as I heard about these back guard and brawls, you know, I rang John. I said, look, we need to. You've probably had a few before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's not getting paid as much, <laughs> I suppose. Um, <laughs> nah, um, you know, I said to John, you need to get on the phone to someone um, and see if we can get on the get on one of them, you know, as fast as possible. So to, to, to get on one and headline the first one, you know, is I'm over the moon with. Um, it's a good fight, but it's one that I believe I can I can win and look good in. So, so yeah, it, it, it all it all stands for a good night. You turned pro with a very limited amateur career, yeah. if, if at all, and you know you got thrown in the deep end in prize fighter. You won British Commonwealth European Championships. You stepped up. You got beat. You came back again. You got beat. You came back again. Yeah. Do you feel like? You know, even at 26, which is such a young age, fighters not expecting to peak till their late 20s even, yeah. that you are still learning and improving. I've been hearing great things about your sparring in this camp with Liam Smith as well. <laughs> yeah, like you say, I mean, I think a lot of people put uh, put a lot into into a loss. Um, you know, you can lose and you can come back. You know, history tells you that. So, you know, a lot of people put into a loss, maybe pack it in or, 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 or do something else. But, yeah, um, the losses in the wins, we've had big nights, we've had, you know, bad nights, but... It all it all stands for a, for a good book, um, but yeah, it's just some of that. You know, it it don't define me. Um, I am still learning. I am still getting better, and I'm getting bigger and stronger. So, so yeah, I, I feel good. You know, the, the weight's well, um, training's gone well, and you know, Saturday night should should be a good night. Ted, this is a massive opportunity for you after a rough eighteen months. I mean, when you look back and think. You know, your last three fights against Scott Fitzgerald, Kieran Conway, uh, Sergio Garcia, winless in those three, but, you know, coming off great performances in them. A lot of people felt like you beat Scott Fitzgerald. I believe you certainly beat Kieran Conway. Sergio Garcia was a bad performance by your own admissions as well. But what a chance for you at 24 years of age to enter that world top ten and completely transform the path of your career. Yeah, um, it just shows if you stay uh, driving for your, t for your targets and pushing and staying determined you'll get um, your opportunities you need. And this is a perfect opportunity for me to refresh my career and push on. A lot of people talking about this fight being a war and everybody expects it to be toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We saw you box off the back foot against Fitzgerald and do very well in that fight. People think you might do the same in this fight as well. Are you, you going to mix it up? Are you expected to go to war with Sam Eggington as well, but also box the right fight to win? Um, you look at Sam and obviously like you know what you get with Sam and most of the time you know what you get with me but for me it's I get in the ring I have a couple of rounds sort of feeling it out and uh, working it out and then whatever I feel um, is going to be best for me to give me the best chance of winning that's the way I'll box. You made some comments about your size you don't believe that Sam is big or strong enough for 154 pound you look in tremendous shape. We've seen the pictures uh, in camp as well. Do you feel like your strength at the weight will be a big factor in defeating Sam Eggington on Saturday? Yeah, uh, what people don't realise is I'm, I'm still young, I'm still a baby, I'm 24, but I'm maturing all the time. And over these 18 months, like you say, I've been maturing and learning a lot and working on stuff and have a lot of, a lot of time to work on things. When everything's going right, you're not working on stuff, you sort of, you're just cruising by. But... Now I've been working on a lot of things, being very um, negative on stuff I've been doing, so making sure it's all perfect. And I believe I've matured, I'm stronger, I'm a man now, and I, I just believe Sam was a massive bolter, but he ain't as dominant at, at uh, light middle. How much do you want this on Saturday? How important is this for your career and your life? You know, this is a must-win fight for Ted Cheeseman. Under the lights at Maskell's, no O2 Arena, no... Your lot coming down from Bermondsey yeah. to make some noise. It's just raw and ready and a must-win fight. Are you ready to go to the deepest depths to get depths to get victory on Saturday? Yeah, a hundred percent. And um, everyone's going on about the the fight camp of, of boring and like like in the hotel and weird in the back garden. For me, this is the best possible situation I could have. Uh, I've lived a very active life, so for the lockdown, I've had no distractions. I've had the best camp I've ever had as a pro. Um, being in a hotel for four days before the fight is perfect because I'm usually running around like lunatic, dropping tickets off, picking up money, and I'm just focused on the fight. And I think, like you said, if you look at my pictures and my training and, and you speak to Tony and the boys in the gym, I've never been so determined and, and to get the win and in such a good shape. So I'm just looking forward to Saturday night now. Sam, finally to you, you've been to the depths many times. Are you ready to do it again? You still have that hunger 
when it gets tough, like I said, no crowds, no people cheering you on. It's just going to be down to your soul to get through and dig deep. Are you ready for Saturday yeah. night? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm 100% ready. Um, I'm not going to throw any cliches at you, but yeah, I'm ready. You know, it's all the same to me. Um, like I said before, I do it in my back garden if I got paid, you know, with no one watching. So your back garden is just a bigger, posher back garden. Um, <laughs> you know, so I'm happy to do it there. So <laughs> Good so stuff, yeah. guys. Well, listen, thank you both for taking this fight because, again, you know, it's, it's always difficult putting two guys in who we, you know, work with and we care about together. But the stage is set for both of you on Saturday night. The opportunity is there. Go and grab it with both hands. Fight camp, main event, week one, IBF, International Super Welterweight Championship, Sang Eggington against Ted Cheeseman ready for a war at the Matrim Square Gardens. Over to you guys. Before we go, sorry, one head-to-head, -head, final head-to-head -head on this tape here. Mike's down. Ted, that's your microphone there, mate. We're live on the Sky Sports uh, Boxing YouTube channel. Um, nice words between the two of you there. Uh, interesting what you said about him at World Weight, that you don't believe that he's going to carry that physicality up. Yeah, uh, you know what? I've watched, been watching his fights. Um, I've watched Sam's fights over the years. And obviously, you look at um, the highlight sort of reels you put for the promoting the fight, and you see he, his knockouts and his dominant performances were at World Weight. At, um, like middle, you ain't seen that, do you know what I mean? He had that one performance in Italy, but if you look at the fella, really, if you go back to it, give me that fella, I'll do the exact same to him, do you know what I mean? It's, I just believe um, it's the right time for me. Um, Sam's a good fight, I just believe I'm better. You said to us yesterday uh, that you can't change what's deep down inside you, and deep down inside of him and you is this desire to have a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight, and at yeah. some point during this fight, he thinks that's going to happen. Would you agree with that? Yeah, at points of the fight, it's going to have to happen. We're, we're in a ring, we're not in a big field. We, we can't keep running, you can't keep moving. There's going to be points where we're going to collide and, and it's going to be a war. But it'll be on my terms, you know what I mean? It won't be when he wants a war, it'll be when I want a war. And how, how can you control that? Is that making the fight at your pace and, and using your boxing skills like people keep mentioning in the first half of the Fitzgerald fight? Yeah, using my boxing skills, dictating the pace of the fight. And that's what I'm saying, exactly that, dictating the fight, to controlling it, do you know what I mean? And by me controlling the fight, I'll do what I want when I need to. It's funny, because I think it's something that you said on the Toe to Toe podcast, like feel like you've been pigeonholed as this guy that likes yeah. to take shots to, to his face and, and doesn't have the other elements in your, yeah. in your arsenal. Or do you feel that that's still an unfair thing that people uh, level against you, that you are just this brawler? Yeah, 100%. Um, if you go back to all my fights before the um, Garcia fight, You'll see I've done a lot of boxing in them fights and there was fights I stood off and boxed and then mixed it. But like I said yesterday, I do what I do, I have to do to win. Garcia fight, my head, I, I was in the ring, my head weren't, so I boxed terribly. Kieran Conway fight, out straight after I come forward, I had to come forward because it's a big, a lanky, like middle massive. So standing off him, I would have been picked off. Scott Fitzgerald, big strong man who's going to uh, pressure you. I boxed on the back foot. I do what I need to do and adapt my style to what I think is going to make me win the fight. Do you think you hit hard enough to uh, stop him? He, he comes with a very durable reputation, even against Liam Smith, who's an elite at that level. Um, it seems to be like the eye that plays the difference, not necessarily Liam Smith um, putting him away with one shot. Do you think that you do have one shot power? Um, you don't know. It. It's the right kind of lands. I think what it'll be is punishment, punishment, shots, a lot of shots landing. And then sooner or later, after the rounds keep going on, one shot landing or a flurry of shots landing and it will, like the ref will have to jump in. What have you seen from uh, social media about the, the venue and what can you look forward to? It's, it, I don't want to overdo it, but it does yeah. feel very historic because we've never done anything quite like this. Yeah, cool. So um, it's a big event, like you say. I'm really excited. And I think me and Sam are the perfect um, two fighters for what this fight camp's representing as of um, no easy fights. Um, let's get in there and have it. There's no crowd. Let's have a big. Let's have a fight. Let's make it entertaining. And I think that's what me and Sam do usually every fight. So it's a good, good way to start the show off. Don't want to obviously put words in your mouth or make you look past this fight. But the 
future in this division is so rich domestically. Is that one direction you're looking, or are you going to say to Eddie if you come through look, this, look, that brings the world rank and I want it to be next on the, the world title train? It's all down to Tony and Charlie, like my, my cut trainer and manager, and um, for them to decide them opportunities. Before, I always, always keep jumping for stuff and pushing for stuff, but that was when I was rushing and trying to look, go too ahead too quick. And now, um, I'm still 24. I've got to let them sort of take control, otherwise I might as well be my own coach and my own manager. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for joining us. The internet's been really slow in the hotel, and yeah. really that's because of your playing your Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> streaming it. So anybody that's got a problem, I keep hearing that we're using our broadcast, yeah. but it's actually you on your Xbox. But yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll take it on the chin. Take yeah. it on the chin. Good on you. Um, I'm going to swap you out. While we're waiting for a Sam to come around, maybe Eddie might join us for uh, one last... That uh, sets it up perfectly. I think it feels like, style-wise, that fight just can't be a bad one. I know you've said that before with, I think it was Murray Rosado. It just that felt like it can't be a bad one. That one, style-wise, just can't be bad, can it? I think so. I mean, as much as there's pressure to get the win, there's also pressure to entertain. You know, and you've got to get the mix right. These guys are fighting for their career. They're not going to just go in and please you. They need to get the win. But, you know, you want to win well, and you want to win in a great fight. And I think... You know, I, I do expect Ted to box in the early stages of the fight. You know what Sam's going to do. Sam's going to come forward. He's going to try and walk Ted Cheeseman down. And that might play into his hands because you saw Ted box really well off the back foot against Scott Fitzgerald. Um, but, you know, Fitzgerald throws more sort of one-two shots where Sam's coming at you everywhere with all kinds of different shots. So I think this is going to go to the well. It's a, such a big opportunity for Ted because everything that he's been through wins this fight. All of a sudden, he's back in the top ten, maybe in the top five of the IBF in the world. So... And Sam's trying to protect that. You know, he's been up, he's been down, he's been up, he's down. But Sam's, Sam's fearless in the respect that he doesn't feel like he ever has anything to lose because he started with nothing. You know, he came into this game really to make a few quid as a, as a journeyman, if you want. So, you know, he can't believe where he's got to, really. But for Ted, you know, Ted expected to be at these levels. So the pressure's on him to win this fight and, you know, the pressure's on Sam Eggington. But I think Sam will go in there and do his thing and it'll be on Ted to put the right game plan together. And, you know whilst I'm sure they have the strategies going into the fight I hope they just have a right old tear up to be honest with you so uh, yeah, we will see yeah. you can ask Mr Eggington yeah I will are you alright to come back just once Sam's yeah, sure. finished yeah. just for one more Sam can you just come to this one here Sam we're live don't expect you to swear anyway but um, this is your this is your microphone here um, I've just been saying this style wise it feels like this is going to be a real barn burner um, can you see it going any other way than the red mist will descend at some point? Yeah, without a doubt. I was just saying to them over there, you know, we saw Ted Bucks, you know, he tried with Fitzgerald and he's done well for the first four rounds. But when it's not your style, you fade fast doing that stuff. You know, because you have to think about it, you have to put more into it. So he probably will box for the first three or four, but he'll fade fast and, and, and that's where it'll get into, you know, the war that everyone's on about. You're probably getting bored of me saying it now, but for Sam Eggington, at this point of the week when you're doing well to wait, it was very difficult to even get like a two or three word yeah. answer because the weight was such a, a drain on you. You seem completely different now. Yeah, it's, like I say, it, it, it's different. It's um, it's a world of difference, mate. Honestly, like to, um, you know, things of thing, thing, things are so different in camp. Even like John's been saying all week, I'm just a jolly, I'm just jolly a person in camp. You know, at home. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just a whole different, whole different way of training. Because I don't have to just burn the weight, you know, daily. Um, I'm doing it comfortable and you know, I'm doing it well. Perfect. Well, just finally before you go, your prediction. How do you win this fight? I think it'll go late, but I'll get a late stoppage. I genuinely believe that. Top man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Can I just draw it? Yeah. Just one. Before you go, you just really want to ask you about week four. Um, got so much water to flow under the bridge before we get to that point. But the pay-per-view, um, Dillian White and Alexander Povetkin. How is that holding up? How's that looking? Great. I mean, you know, you've got obviously the main fight there, Povetkin against uh, Dillian White. Great fight. Such a risky fight with so much on the line for Dillian White as number one contender, the mandatory for Tyson Fury. And that rematch of Taylor Pursoon, you know, one of the best fights I've ever seen live at Madison Square Garden last year. 20,000 people on their feet. It's mad to think that those two fights will be taking place at the office. And by then, we would have had three events under the, the, the wing. Hopefully, we'll be running a lot smoother by then. It's going to be challenges, you know, with 30 four degrees tomorrow I think we're 26 degrees on Saturday perfect next Friday looked a bit iffy at the moment now it's turned back to sun we're going to get rain you know we're going to get point, at some point yeah of course we are we're going to get someone pull out we're going to get someone 
hopefully touch wood not, that test positive for COVID, there's going to be all kinds of ups and downs and there's going to be so much drama at fight camp. But in a way, we're ready for it. You know, we've had that nice little period off. We've walked the dogs. We've had the nice little bike rides with the family. Now throw it at me. Throw the problems at me. I'm ready. You know, I'm refreshed. And <laughs> that's what we deal with. Yeah, but that's what we deal with in boxing. All the time, problems, aggravation, people trying to make sure you fail. It doesn't matter, but you've just got to keep at it, keep focused and keep trying to solve the problems every day. And, you know, we've done a great job to get to this point where we know that fight week, fight camp week one, good to go. You know, subject to everyone making weight tomorrow, which we know the check weights are all fine. Make weight, let's get up there, let's have some fun on Saturday night. Let's get back to what we love, which is live boxing and a different kind of environment. Turn those mics up at ringside, hear those punches land. Watch these guys fight for their career in the strangest of environments, in the strangest of years, to see if they can go out and make a name for themselves. You're gonna see, you're gonna see everything on Saturday. And this is a four week period that, you know, fight camps had so much traction. I think this is going to be a, a yearly uh, routine. You know, I don't think the old man's too happy about that with the long. But I just think it's great. People have embraced it. The fighters have embraced it. They're down here in isolation, watching the pictures from HQ, just 500 yards up the road, going, "Wow!" And when they arrive, they're going to feel it. You know, and I, I think Touchwood, we're going to get a great night on Saturday. You said throw problems at you. Just one more before you go. There's sort of great interview you did yesterday on Sky Sports News. Uh, some of the comments were, "What happens if Dylan White?" Beats Alexander Povetkin and Fury, um, obviously, is in the mix there. Could White steal the march and fight Fury yeah, he, before? He Aiken? should do. He should do. I mean, look, I, I'm under pressure because people believe that Dillian White should get his shot at the world title. Of course, he should. And once he beats, hopefully, beats Alexander Povetkin, he definitely should. But also, everybody wants me to make the undisputed fight between AJ and Tyson Fury. But you know, chronologically, that date has been given by the WBC at the end of February. Dillian White has been number one for over 1,000 days. So in my opinion, the WBC can't move that date anymore. It would look ridiculous. And AJ's going to box in December, and then he'll box again in June, July. So there's no reason why Dillian shouldn't get that shot. But so much has got to play out. White Povetkin, AJ against Pulev, Wilder against Fury. Do we all fancy the A-side to win those fights? Are they all going to win those fights? I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. So right now, we know the plans, but first things first, as we live in a crazy world right now, let's deal with the reality of what we do know. White Povetkin, Usyk Chizora, Wilder against Fury, and AJ against Pula. And then we'll see where the path lies. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for making Cheers, this Cheers, guys. Stream. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah, you. Thank you Good fun. Well, I'll say goodbye. Uh, thank you for joining us. I know at times that was a little bit chaotic, <laughs> but thank you for staying with us. Apologies for any of the content or the language that might have been uh, unsavoury. Make sure you stay with us Saturday night. So we should be doing the same again for the weigh-in tomorrow on the stream. So make sure you join us on the Sky Sports Box YouTube channel and social media channels. And find out on Saturday, 7 o'clock, all the action on the Sky Sports action. Thanks for joining us.